What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Please like and subscribe. I'm happy. I'm just happy. But I'm also happy you're here. It's been a while since I did a video. And, and it's time. It's time to do a video. So what are we going to talk about today? I want to focus on focus in a way. So this is something that I have brought into my awareness and, and I can't believe it took me this long to start, to start like implementing it. It's like a, it's like a, I've, I'm kind of getting into like music production and so I'm, I'm figuring out all these plugins and plugins is a really good way to think of these these like tools I'm introducing. It's like, hey, try this plugin right now. So uh, what I what what this all is about is that the universe is abundant. And I kind of talked about this in my video on gratitude. Like the truth is there is no lack. There is always an abundance of something. And, um, and with that too, every subject is actually two subjects. And if ever you're distressed about something, you're perceiving there to be an abundance of something you don't want. But the reason that's distressing is actually because like, and what I mean by abundance is like, it's a positive universe. Like as in, as in a, an electrode or something, you know, like a positive and negative, there's, there's only positive of something. And so there's, so there's abundance that you perceive to be lacking. That makes sense. And in its place, you perceive something else. So there's never a void. There's just fullness. And if you can identify something that is upsetting to you, where you perceive there to be a lack, you know, it. the only thing there really is for you to do is to look at it a different way. If you keep hammering in about the lack of something, you just keep getting lack of something um, or the thing that you don't want that is the negative of the positive okay but and this is astonishing when you actually start practicing it like we don't we do not even know what we want I think on a, like a deep level we do but in terms of our consciousness, we don't know what we want. We just know what we don't want. And, and this is going to sound like really maybe simplistic, but I think that romantic comedy heroines are such a good representation of this. I grew up watching a lot of Julia Roberts movies. Ugh, ugh. By the way, Notting Hill might be the, the best film ever made. Let's just say that. Notting Hill. Notting Hill. But, so there was like Notting Hill. And then there's My Best Friend's Wedding. Which isn't isn't among my favorite. But like for me, it was Notting Hill. And um, Runaway Bride. Runaway Bride! And the whole thing about Runaway Bride is, um, you know, there's this woman who adapts herself to whatever man she's in a relationship with. And then, um, you know, what's his name? What's his name? Funny face. Richard Gere is like, what do you want? What's her name even in this? Like Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. And there's this whole thing about like how she takes her eggs and depending on who she's in a relationship with, she takes her eggs exactly like they make their eggs. And, and it's like, how do you like your eggs, Maggie? And the whole thing is about like, you need to figure out what you want. And this is also uh, in the notebook. It's in every romantic comedy, I swear. Because apparently women don't know what they want because they just get very good at 
at being agreeable, you know, and like blending with, with the person they're with, with, which is like an amazing quality, by the way. I think that is underrated, the extent to which like someone can adapt and go with the flow. Like women are cooperative. We're so cooperative, but sometimes we're too cooperative. And really we're not here to, to be like someone else and to, to fit perfectly with someone else. We're here to be ourselves and to have that, um, you know, to have that complement something else as opposed to just being a perfect enmeshment. But so, so all that to say, you have to know what you want. And the truth is, it's available to you. It is, it is in your face because chances are there is something in your life right now that you are not satisfied with. That isn't exactly the way you want it. And the way to identify this is just what, what topic makes you feel bad? Just your emotions. What doesn't feel good? And then if you're like, okay, I don't feel good right now. Why don't you feel good? What story are you telling yourself? What, what are you perceiving to be there? Wait, what are you perceiving there to be a lack of or an abundance of, you know? And, and from that, from that, like, tip it, you know, what do you wish was there? And people don't do this, maybe because like, first of all, well, there's like a whole variety of reasons. Maybe you think like, I don't want to even dwell on the idea of what I want because I'm not supposed to get what I want or, or it hurts to think about what I actually want because I want it so badly that it actually feels painful. But the truth is like, if you want something, the idea of it is exciting in some way. And so it's never the thing that you want that's actually creating pain. It's the belief or the thought that you can't have it. That's very, very, very different because from that, it's never the thing. It's the filter you put on the thing. So, and like the thing doesn't cause you pain. The idea of the thing never causes you pain because then you wouldn't want it. It's just that simple. You wouldn't want it because it wouldn't be attractive to you. So to give an example of something, can I pull from my actual life? Okay, I'll give you an example right now. So like my battery is flashing and I charged it super quick before making this video because I hadn't really used my camera in a while. And that's causing me like a little bit of stress. Um, but instead of being like, my battery's almost dying out, what do I want in this situation? I want my equipment to be like ready to go every time I'm ready to film. I want to be like on top of things, you know, I want, I want, um, to feel professional. I want to feel relaxed while I'm making these videos. Like everything's in its place. Everything's in order and I can just speak and not be distracted. So even that's okay, what I just said, not be distracted. So what do I want? I want focus. I want simplicity. I just want clarity. This is really basic, but when you start paying attention, you see that this happens throughout the day. Every time you have a little tug, a little, mm, I don't like that. You can redirect your thoughts and be like, what is it I do want? Because anything that you, any direction that you go against something is going to create more of that. That's why fixing doesn't work. Because in the fixing of something, you're establishing the something further. So <laughs> fixing your pimples is going to further create the existence of pimples whereas if you focus more on like beautiful skin that's a very 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 different focus and it's going to give you different ideas of actions you might take different thoughts 
different a different perspective like it's it's gonna it's a world of difference when you actually tilt and focus on what it is you do want and this is why mother Teresa is famous for saying like i'll never march against war i'll march for peace and and when you actually start looking at the world like it's amazing how much our attention is focused on the things that we don't want as a society um and and there it is there but you have to look for it you actually have to look for it harder i find than um than the prevailing anti movement to call it that you have to look for those people who are for something who are putting their attention in what they do want to create and what they do want to exist um and that's too bad but we're getting there there's more people thinking along these terms um and and the truth is too also with this i just want to say like let yourself linger in your desires and your wants like, like, let yourself daydream. Let yourself be inspired and pulled along with that vision. Um, and the more that you do that, this happens kind of conversely. So, like, if you imagine it like a, like a balloon or something that's uplifting, you know, something that there's two ways you can go about it. Like, you can release your resistance around it and it'll float and it'll pull you. Or another way to kind of release that resistance is just to focus on the things that are, that you want. It's just to give your attention over to the balloon and like the things will fall away. You can do it both ways. Um, but yeah, like the truth is people, people worry about like, well, I have to see things as they are or I have to be realistic. Or like, I have to pay attention to this problem. And the truth is like, you can't be realistic. So give up. Because, because there is, there is no like one story. There is no one truth. There is no like, this is how it is. No, you've like added and interpreted it. Interpreted it. So, so it's not like you're living in, in reality you're living in the version that you have perpetuated up to this point. And you can just as easily like give yourself up. You can be realistic with a completely different tilt and it's just as realistic. So, so that's what I want to say. And, um, and this is, this is really important. It, it really is. You're here to want things and you're here to be inspired and you're here to grow into what it is you like like you're you're here to become the person you want to be and to have the things you want otherwise why like there can't be anything but that honestly and if ever you have like a negative uh, it is typically because you want something and you think you can't have it. So just get what you want. Okay. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.